Did you know that scorpions are also highly adapted desert creatures? Their waxy skin covering means that even in extreme conditions, their bodies lose almost no water. In comparison, we humans would lose almost 1,000 times more. And did you know that some reptiles are capable of freezing solid in the winter months, then thawing out completely unharmed in the spring? Among these are box and painted turtles and the garter snake. But now a South American beauty who has so many unusual adaptations that for years scientists couldn't agree exactly what it was. A cow or a cuckoo? The hoatzin, the national bird of Guyana, is the only bird that has an extra stomach for fermentation, just like a cow. And in that stomach, as in a cow's, there are bacteria to help it digest cellulose because it only eats leaves, another unique specialization. It's also known as the stink bird because of the odor it gives off to scare away predators. Its chicks are fed on a regurgitated mush of partly digested leaves, and they too have a unique adaptation. Although they have strong claws on their feet, they also have small claws on their wings. They're an added help in balancing and climbing about the trees. But as the bird grows up, the claws reduce in size and in some cases drop off entirely. It was only when the scientists got round to looking at the Hotsin's genetic code that the riddle was answered. From what family did it come? The pheasant, chicken, cuckoo? When the sequencing was analyzed, it turned out to be related to the cuckoo. The adults can fly, but after about 100 meters, they run out of steam and crash land. They actually prefer to climb about in the trees, which is what this youngster is practicing. It's also contemplating its first flight. which turns out to be even shorter than the adults. Fortunately, young Hotsins can swim. The adults can't. And moonlight, shining on the island of Madagascar, reveals another weird animal full of strange adaptations. It's related to the lemur, but looks like a large cat it has the ears of a bat, the eyes of an owl, the bushy tail of a squirrel, and the sharp, ever-growing incisor teeth of a beaver. It's the eye eye, and it's looking for grubs in the rotting wood of the forest. It has an extended third finger with which it taps the bark of trees. It listens for the reverberation and can tell whether there's a hollow below containing any insect larvae. It then bites through the outer layer of bark and uses its specially adapted finger to pull out its prey. Eye eyes are solitary, nocturnal primates and spend most of the night traveling from tree to tree feeding. Their other major sources of food include fungi and the fruit of certain trees. They have even learned to use their extra long finger to measure the milk level inside coconuts. Did you know that the woodpecker has a specially hardened and padded skull? It cushions the woodpecker's brain while the bird hammers holes into trees. And did you know that the gila monster stores fat in its tail? When food is scarce, it breaks down the fat so that its tail becomes smaller and smaller, a bit like a camel's hump. In fact, its tail can almost shrivel away to nothing. Even the bustling streets of Hong Kong, a city that never sleeps, have their own wildlife. Crab-eating macaque monkeys rarely bother with their natural diet these days. Instead, they exploit the six million citizens of Hong Kong and help themselves to whatever's going. They're shameless, streetwise beggars.
They've absolutely no fear of humans. Nor of the thundering traffic that never stops. Hong Kong's high-rise buildings may have 50 storeys or more, but the level grasslands of Africa are also divided into different layers, and various animals have adapted themselves to living there. This is the Dick Dick, one of the smaller members of the antelope family, and it's not much bigger than a hare. Shy and nervous, it feeds on the lowest level, grasses and bushes close to the ground. Way beyond its reach are the leaves of the acacia, one of the few trees that grow on the African savanna. And the animal that has adapted itself to eating these is the giraffe. The giraffe is the world's tallest land animal and they can grow nearly nine meters high. Although they have the same number of neck vertebrae as most mammals, seven, they're greatly elongated, and the giraffe avoids competition by browsing on the highest branches. They also avoid competition between the sexes, with the females feeding at a lower level than the males. They wind their long tongues between the acacia thorns, and they have a special muscle on their lips which is puncture-proof. They're also beautifully camouflaged. Like zebra, giraffe lead a nomadic life, following the unpredictable rains and searching out any fresh growth of leaves they can find. Avoiding competition for this scarce food by feeding on the intermediate layer of acacia, too high for the dick dick and too low for the giraffe, is the geranook, another well-adapted niche feeder which also has a thorn-proof mouth. The geranook, which resembles a gazelle, doesn't eat grass and so it sometimes stands on its hind legs, stretching its neck to reach the higher leaves, hence its nickname, the gazelle giraffe. Another useful adaptation on these grasslands, where the rainfall is sporadic, is the geranook's ability to extract all the moisture it needs from the plants it eats. This means it doesn't have to visit the waterholes where the predators often wait. Did you know that giraffes have special valves in the blood vessels of their neck? These valves stop the blood rushing to their heads while they're drinking and prevent them from fainting. And did you know that the African lungfish buries itself in the mud when the river dries out? As its name implies, it has lungs. Most fish don't, and it breathes the air trapped in the mud. It can survive like that for four years. Mm -hmm. 